Now we're talking about overactive adrenal glands. This is called Cushing syndrome. The adrenal glands are like top hats on the kidneys. Their job is to produce different kinds of steroid hormones, especially cortisol and adrenaline. These hormones are necessary for life because they regulate stress responses that control blood pressure and how our bodies use glucose. Sometimes the adrenal glands can make too much of these hormones and this has very important consequences on the patient's overall health. The general term for excess cortisol is Cushing syndrome. Why would the adrenal gland become overactive? Sometimes there's a tumor in the pituitary gland that's in the brain. This gland normally makes ACTH or adrenocorticotropin hormone. This signals the adrenal glands to do their job. If a pituitary tumor happens to make that ACTH independently, then the adrenal glands will respond by pumping out an excess of cortisol. Sometimes there is a nodule in the adrenal gland that makes cortisol independently. Some types of cancer can even make hormones independently. What are the symptoms of Cushing syndrome? The classic textbook appearance is obesity that's especially prominent at the midsection with red or purple stretch marks, excess hair, a buffalo hump, and a moon face. Patients may have fatigue, weakness, bruising, high blood sugar, and high blood pressure. How do we diagnose Cushing syndrome? First, we do a screening test. We'll take one to two milligrams of dexamethasone, which is a steroid, at 11 o'clock at night and have blood drawn at eight o'clock the next morning. Fasting is not important, but the time of day is. A normal person will shut off their own cortisol and have a level less than 1.8 after taking that dexamethasone pill. If the screening test is positive, meaning the cortisol level is greater than 1.8, then we have to confirm that result with two other kinds of tests. The first one is called midnight salivary cortisol, and we do that three consecutive nights. The second test is a 24-hour collection of urine to measure how much cortisol you make. A normal adrenal gland is going to make about 50 milligrams in a day. If the lab tests show us for sure we have excess cortisol, then we gotta figure out where is it coming from. We do a lab test for that ACTH. We'll look at a CAT scan for the adrenal glands. If the ACTH is responsible, then we will do an MRI of the pituitary. If no source is easily found, then we have to think about whether or not a cancer might be making that hormone on its own. So once you have Cushing syndrome as a diagnosis, how do we treat it? If the source is in the pituitary gland, what we call Cushing disease, the first line definitive treatment is surgical removal of that tumor by an experienced neurosurgeon. If the source is an adrenal nodule, the first line definitive treatment is surgical removal of the tumor or gland by either a general surgeon or a urologist. The remaining gland can compensate hormonally. If the patient is not a safe candidate for surgery, there are medications that can be given to block excess cortisol. One example is mifepristone, which interestingly is used for medical abortions, but it turns out it also blocks adrenal activity. What happens after definitive treatment? Patients will show an impressive change. They'll lose weight, diabetes may completely resolve, blood pressure decreases, and health span and lifespan improve significantly. When you have questions about these things, you can Google image search Cushing syndrome before and after surgery for images of what the classic Cushing appearance is and how that can dramatically change after treatment. The Mayo Clinic has an excellent section on Cushing syndrome, and the National Institutes of Health have a section on their website about Cushing syndrome.